In this lecture, uh, we are going to see the regular grammars and context-free grammars. We know there are various representations or models we have to represent a language. That means regular grammar is used to represent a regular language and context-free grammar is used to represent context-free language. Before this, uh, you have seen in the previous three lectures, one is regular expressions and finite automata both represents a regular language and the second we have seen how to identify regular languages and non-regular languages. The third one how to apply different operations over the regular languages which is nothing but closure properties of regular languages. Now we are going to learn the grammars. So I hope you have uh, followed the regular expressions and finite automata as well as regular languages and non-regular languages, closure properties of regular languages. Now, regular grammars and context-free grammars. Okay. So what is a grammar? Before learning what is a grammar, we have various types of grammars. Of course, I have added very few types of grammars which will help you in theory of computation. But when you are going to study compiler design, you will be seeing our various types of grammars like LR0 grammar, LR1 grammar and so on, which will help you for uh, designing or building a compiler. Now, the regular grammar, linear grammar, context-free grammar, context-sensitive grammar, unrestricted grammar, in which the mainly the Chomsky hierarchy is um, designed with the uh, four classes. One class talks about the regular languages. For them, you can use regular grammar. Another context-free languages, you can use context-free grammars. And the context-sensitive languages, you can use context-sensitive grammars. For recursively enumerable languages, you can use unrestricted grammar, also called as uh, recursively enumerable grammar. Now. Uh, we need to know the definition of each one, but we will focus right now regular grammar and context-free grammar, and also I will explain linear grammar in this along with these two grammars. Now, what is a grammar? Any grammar you take, the grammar is uh, nothing but the collection of the four parameters. Here we are going to use the four parameters to define the grammar. In general, grammar is nothing but set of rules which will help you to represent a language or you can say which will help you to generate the set of strings. The so rules here, the P will have the collection of rules. So we have a lot of collections here. Here S is a start symbol. What is S? A start symbol. You can say S belongs to the V. Then what is a V here? V is the set of variables. You can also say non-terminals. And what is T? T is nothing but set of terminals. And P is set of rules. Okay. And anyhow, uh, this is uh, right now is not much important, but to define or to understand any grammar here, you require these four parameters. Okay. How we are going to represent the grammar? As I told, we require four parameters in which the P, how do you define every production in the every type of a grammar here? So in regular grammar, how P, the rules are formed. In linear grammar, how the rules are formed are going to be deferred. So we are going to start with a regular grammar and there we are going to see how the rules are defined in a regular grammar. So as I told, the grammar is the collection of four tuples or four parameters
now basically grammar is the set of rules you can say that collectively are going to help us to derive or it represents a language and actually how it represents it is going to generate the set of strings it generates set of strings it's basically about the grammar and we will uh, see in detail from the regular grammar so let's start with the regular grammar now the first definition what is a regular grammar it's also the collection of four parameters that we have but here we are going to define the rule or we are going to restrict how the rule or production appears this regular grammar also represents a language but it represents a specific language called as regular language every regular grammar is going to represent a regular language but how the regular grammar looks like it has a rule right it's going to depend on two types of uh, grammars you can say it is llg or you can use rlg definition okay but do not combine the two definitions of llg rlg the grammar should be llg or grammar should be rlg then you can call it as regular grammar llg has its own definition rlg also has its own definition both comes under regular grammar while writing a grammar do not mix the rules of llg and rlg to write a grammar so what is llg and what is rlg what is left linear grammar left linear grammar so here a linear grammar is going to come later so we'll talk about that soon llg and we have one more is rlg right linear grammar is rlg so what is this left linear and right linear in this left linear when you form the rules we know any grammar that you take you will be having the four parameters right as i told the vts is going to be same they are going to be same for all the grammars but how you write a p or rules in a p are going to be different now what is the rule each rule in left linear grammar each rule it's going to appear in the form v arrow the left linear so we represent a non terminal if any non terminal comes that must be in the left position also called as first position and followed by any sequence of terminals t star in case if you don't see a non terminal you should see only the sequence of terminals so this is um, a restriction to form a rule or production in the grammar in the regular grammar so in the left linear grammar that too so this is the left linear restriction or left linear grammar definition how do you write the rules in left linear so let me give some examples here i'm just writing s derives s a b or epsilon you can see that s a b you just cross check with the two uh, def two rules we have or two forms we have s is a non terminal followed by any sequence of terminals you may have you may not have it's fine but you should have only terminals either it could be t power 0 t power 1 t power 2 so this is t power 2 mean sequence of two terminals now epsilon is a t power 0 i can write as epsilon so similarly i may write any number of productions like this if you want to write something like s derives s a or s a b or a a b or epsilon or you can write any number there is no uh, restriction how many you write here 
So this is about left linear grammar. If you see non-Tamil in the RHS side, non-Tamil in the RHS side, that must be in the first position. Okay. Let me explain one more uh, time in detail. What is V here? What is V here? If you take, you know, in this uh, two examples, V represent only one non-terminal that is S. Obviously, S is also a start symbol because we have only one non-terminal in these two grammars. And what is the T represent here? T represent in both the grammars we have two terminals A small a small b that's lowercase a comma b. Epsilon is a, not a terminal and not a symbol basically it's a special string that we have. Fine. So now the V represent any non-terminal that you can write but only one because I didn't say V square I said only V power 1 it means which is nothing but only one non-terminal you can write there. Now here v power 1 means one non-terminal followed by sequence of any sequence of terminals. Then what is t star? Just like a sigma star when sigma is a comma b. That means any string you can put here after the non-terminal. Or you can just write the sequence of terminals that is called as a string in our you know uh, TOC terminology. But in grammar we call here uh, the v followed by t star which is a sequence of the first symbol is a non-terminal and followed by any sequence of terminals. Now what about right linear grammar? I hope you got a clarity in left linear but still we have a lot of examples to understand both left and right. So what is right linear grammar? Same left hand side exactly and only one non-terminal exactly only one non-terminal followed by in case if you see non-terminal in the right side that must be at last that's called as rightmost and before that any sequence of terminal is fine. In case if you don't have non-terminals you can have only terminals there is no issue with the only terminals. So we have only two kinds of the productions in the right linear grammar. You can write 100 productions but those 100 productions should follow these two restrictions. This is the definition of right linear grammar. If you want to see some of the examples here. S derives AS or BS or A. So that's definitely right linear grammar. You can see every production will satisfy any of this. Here AS will satisfy with the first rule. BS will satisfy with the first rule. A will satisfy the second rule. So this is a right linear grammar. Second, S derives A, B, A, S or A or Epsilon. Yes, if there is a non-terminal that is only the last position, that's the right most position, right? So this is also right linear grammar in these two productions we do not have any non-terminal so when you don't have a non-terminal that production satisfies both of them and when you have a non-terminal that must be rightmost so this grammar is called as right linear so now you see this is these two are left linear so regular these two are right linear so regular grammars clear this point but do not ever mix these two things like one production is here it looks like v is at the last one production, other production looks like the V is at the first. You can't combine both the rules in the same grammar. Remember that the whole grammar should satisfy these two or whole grammar should satisfy these two. If the grammar is left linear, we can call regular. If the grammar is right linear, then you can call regular. Right? Grammar sometimes could be possible both. When? When you don't have a non-terminal in the grammar, then it can satisfy both the definitions. But when you have a non-terminal along with the terminals, the grammar will follow either this or this, but not both at the same time. Okay? So there are restrictions to understand why we say the grammar sometimes will be called as both left linear as well as right linear. Okay, let's go to the some of the examples. Now, the first question is, identify equivalent regular grammar for the empty language. So it's a very, very basic grammar for you. It's not about the regular grammar. It's about any grammar I talk about. 
then what do you mean by empty language how the grammar can represent empty language right it's possible grammar can represent empty language when the grammar is not generating even a single string even empty string also not generated then we can say that the grammar is actually generating nothing it means it's generating empty language it represents empty language now look at this it's see this it is it s can generate b now let me say something if you want to derive a string you must follow the start symbol there is no other way so wherever the start symbol is there so how do you find the start symbol mostly the first production list you will see the s or capital e sometimes it depends on your rules so in the first list itself you will see the start symbol if s is a start symbol if s can't generate any string that means whole grammar can generate any cannot generate any string now s can generate a b it means it generates something you want to generate nothing so this is non empty language whatever it generates of course it generates some language we will look into that soon so we don't choose this as it is non empty language but we want empty language next one here you see that s can generate a directly forget about other two productions that we will understand later right now s derives a means it derives something it derives something so it is also non empty language now you start thinking about it s derives s a s b s first let me ask you a question all these grammars are regular let's try again this is left linear as you see s is leftmost and here s in both the productions s is at leftmost position so this is also left linear and it is also left linear as you see s in all the productions you can assume it is leftmost so this grammar is llg so all these three grammars are llg but which one is generating empty language now my question is in the c will s generate even one string if you try to do this with s there is no meaning because s calling s there is no meaning but second other two productions s derives s a but how s can end this s never ends right to end them to end them you must have somebody here so that you can substitute this must be other than the non terminal like a string a or b if you have here you can uh, stop that recursion but here you don't have anything to stop that recursion this never generates any string so this is the right answer because it can't generate even single string there is no way to do that so we choose option c and option a or b are producing are generating some languages we will see that soon so this is about the first example second example okay now we are going to practice you understood the definition of regular grammar right either you follow left linear or right linear it depends on your practice so we are going to see now you need to identify the regular grammar first look at are the regular grammar you know this is very important point for you in the exam they clearly said equivalent regular grammar they didn't say any other type see so the grammar is not regular grammar even though it generates the given one we don't care l is generated by the particular grammar that may not be the right option what is the right option the grammar must be regular and that should generate l then we say that is the right option now at this point we have to check or all, all these grammars regular see that this is a very special grammar it is llg not only llg and also rlg why how can you say that this grammar is both llg or lg see that the first production s is there in both definitions and epsilon the t star the first one is v t star means v t power 0 or t star v means t 0 power uh, t 0 t power 0 v this s can appear in both grammars llg and rlg and second one is also can appear in both of them in t star form now that is why this grammar is going to be satisfying both definitions llg and rlg and second one it's just llg so reg regular grammar 
and this one is also both as you don't have a non terminal when you don't have a non terminal in the production then definitely it satisfies both so it is llg and rlg it means all these grammars are regular all these grammars are regular okay any one of the definition is satisfied then that grammar is the regular grammar either llg or rlg is fine okay and now what is the meaning of this l so far i did not discuss about the l see w is belongs to a plus b whole star means everything but length of the string is zero it means it just epsilon out of this three lang grammars which grammar is generating epsilon only right now first one s derives s r epsilon s derives s or epsilon or epsilon now you tell me other than the epsilon can you generate any other string like a b w a a b b a b b no this s also can do the same thing because only the thing that you can do epsilon here it's a very clear the language is epsilon okay you have to look at if it is msq type then there might be other options could be generating epsilon so you have to be care careful so now the second option the first option in here is right as it is generating epsilon now second option you know you may ask sir here capital a is there followed by small e and what capital a is doing really not mentioned in this option means is a useless non terminal when the capital a is useless this production we can't use at all you can eliminate or delete that so now we have only one production left s derives epsilon so it means it should generate only epsilon so this is also right and option c is straight forward it is directly given as generating epsilon that means a b c all these three options are correct identify the equivalent regular grammar for the language uh, looks like the starting with a and the most important thing is this is a form of the string which looks like starting with a but condition says that is a very simple the w length is zero that is a followed by w this length is zero means which is going to be epsilon simply a so language has just a and the, when the la and when the language has just a then what is the equivalent grammar for this language equivalent regular grammar for this language so always important regular grammar sometimes even i may do the mistake if i don't cross check is that grammar regular or not right language might be regular but grammar if it is not regular then generating the given language is not going to help us here it's generating epsilon directly you can see that so straight away you can delete no need to worry about what language is overall it might generate a star but don't worry about right now <coughs> here <coughs> in this option you can see the capital a s is deriving capital a small a followed by small a this capital a is deriving epsilon it means we got just a this is what we are looking for and also is this regular grammar yes it is left linear grammar you can see that it's following left linear so this is the right option and what about the option c it's a generating epsilon that we do not require in our language so we can delete blindly this one so option b is the correct one and my first question in this grammar is how many grammars we can write to represent this language okay it may be regular grammar it may be context free grammar you can take any choice any help and you can write infinite equivalent regular grammars not only them infinite equivalent context free grammars you can write infinite equivalent grammars for this language 
okay this language is a finite language so you can take the help of any grammar that we have seen different types of grammars we have right you can take the help of any grammar you can represent fine so answer is option b now identify equivalent regular grammar what is this language this language is nothing but a plus b whole star if i write a regular expression it's simply any sequence of a's and b's over a comma b now we have a lot of options now you need to choose regular grammar only right now look at these options is there any grammar which is not regular grammar you can see the two non terminals are there here uh, it's rlg it's llg this two okay but option c you cannot write two non terminals in a sequence in any productions of the regular grammar so this straight away you can delete as is not regular grammar first i don't know whether it's generating a or b it's okay it might be generating a plus b whole star but still this grammar is wrong because we want regular grammar okay so you might choose sometimes all of this then this this option is very important even though it generates a plus b whole star but it is not a regular grammar okay now other two options why we say it's generating a plus b whole star you can see here here it's epsilon generated directly as you can see s derives epsilon and how it generates a you can see s you can take s a and this s you can put epsilon right here you can put epsilon so you get a similarly you can get a b and uh, you can generate a a by taking the help of s here you can take a b by taking the help of this s you can get a b similarly b a b b you can generate any sequence uh, from here so option a is correctly representing a plus b whole star and what about option b and what is the difference here in both the grammars you can generate any sequence of a's and b's but here s is the leftmost and here s is the rightmost position so that is only the difference but both are generating a plus b whole star uh, language option c even though this generating a plus b whole star i'll write here one line this grammar generates a plus b whole star language but it is not regular grammar what is not this language is regular language but this grammar this grammar it is not regular grammar you may ask sir the language is regular but why this grammar is not regular the regular languages not only you can write regular grammar you can also write some of the uh, different grammars which are like context free grammar undescript grammar context sensitive grammar you can also use them to represent a regular language as you know regular languages are the subset uh, or you can say the set of regulars is a subset of set of cfls set of cfls is a subset of set of cls when you see regular grammar regular language it is already cfl it is already csl so you can use the context free grammar you can use context sensitive grammar definition so that is why the regular language here the grammar is not regular this grammar is going to satisfy some other grammars it's fine right now we do not know only we know it's not regular grammar but what it generates is a regular language that is a plus b whole star what it generates is a regular but itself is not regular grammar okay that's what i have written here now move to the next example identify equivalent regular grammar and now you can say it starts with a that's true as you don't have any other condition like to mention the length of the string or uh, length of w is zero okay that we don't have any condition here now again we have three examples here a b c and which one generating starting with a you can see starting with a is here the first string should be a the other strings two lengths you can see a a b and so on you take any string the first symbol has to be a so is anybody not showing the first symbol is a you can eliminate simply now you can see 
Directly S can generate A, that's fine. Now double A, it can also generate double A, but can it generate AB? That you have to see. If you go for this AB, that's not possible here. You can try S derives AS, S you can put here BS, but this S you can't eliminate. So AB is not possible here because this S will produce either A or somebody else. So AB is not possible in this. Okay, and there is a meaning for this a grammar. It's actually representing ends with A. What it represents ends with A. Together will produce any sequence of A's and B's, but this A has to be at the end if you want to stop the recursion. So it's going to be A plus B whole star A. If you want to represent this language, then you must use this grammar. Ends with A. Now what about the second option? And this together will produce A plus B whole star. And this A has to be in the beginning if you want to end with S, right? If you want to stop the S. So this is definitely starts with A. And the last one is going to generate epsilon 1A. You can get, when you put S with epsilon, you can get two A's. If you repeat S again and substitute with A's, we'll get uh, two consecutive A's and so on. This will generate A star, A star. And among them, the question is about the starting with A. So we'll choose the option B. We'll choose the option B. Now, we have the starts with B. What is this? Start with B. It is similar to starting with A, but grammars are given. Why this is always challenging for you? Even though you have a practice starting with B, but how many grammars are there in the world? Infinite. So I, I can write infinite regular grammars to represent the same language. That is the reason, even though you know the language, that does not mean that you know the options. Okay. So these options, every time you might be facing uh, with the new productions, you, you need to understand them. Okay, the first one. So before this, this is a starting with B. So what is the minimum string? B. And what is the next minimum? B, A or B, B and so on. So this will give you some conclusion from these options. If you want to eliminate, these options might help you or the strings might help you. Okay, now look at the first one. S derives B, A. S derives B, A. First, is it regular grammar? Anybody is not regular, just eliminate. This shows right side this shows left side that means even though language generated by this is starting with b uh, we don't care we can simply eliminate why the grammar is not regular why it's not regular here a is the rightmost position here a is the leftmost i told you you can't write leftmost rightmost together right in the whole grammar you keep leftmost in the whole grammar you can keep rightmost position but in some productions you keep left in some productions keep right that doesn't help it does not going to be the right way fine so second option is we will see what does this means the here a is there but what a does first you should know what a does it does a a a b or epsilon it means any sequence of a's or b's it will do a plus b whole star and when you put here this a plus b whole star here it ends with b but our question is starts with B. So here this is wrong. This is ends with B. You may ask sir uh, what is the language generated by this? Anyhow it is A plus B whole star. So language generated by this is A, uh, starting with B only. But again the same issue. The given grammar itself not a regular grammar. So what is the language generated by it? We don't care now. Okay. As we want equivalent regular grammar, we didn't ask equivalent context free grammar or equivalent non regular grammar, we didn't ask. Now, option C. All are following the rightmost position to place the non terminal, then this grammar is RLG. And what is the language generated by it? You see, capitally already we know it's A plus B whole star, whether it follows LLG or RLG uh, concept, but that capital is A plus B whole star. From here you can expect uh, starting with B, starting with B. So we can go for option C, option C. Option A is also starting with B, but we cannot as the grammar is not regular. We know 
but grammar given grammar is not regular fine identify the equivalent regular grammar for the language which has strings ending in a now the expression is ending in a so here a plus b whole star followed by a now you need to identify the regular grammar uh, look at that are these grammars regular grammars uh, can you identify yes this is a left inner grammar and here you have right but here you have left so this grammar is not regular grammar at all <coughs> as i told you require to identify first it should be regular grammar this is following right linear grammar definition it's following left linear grammar definition you cannot combine both different rules in the same grammar and this one both are following right linear grammar definition right so this is fine now you need to identify the uh, which of these two grammars are generating uh, the ending in a you can see uh, this one is ending in a but what capital a is doing if it is doing or it's generating everything then this is the right one <coughs> you know this capital a productions are actually giving all the sequence of symbols over a and b epsilon a b if you want to generate a a a b b a uh, b b you can do with this two productions and then you can substitute epsilon so this will generate a plus b whole star when you put this result here you will get exactly ends with a so it's the right option and what about the uh, c option c it's look at that you have these two productions which are actually generating everything but at the end you will be seeing something like this a plus b whole star s if you are only using this any sequence of a's and b's you can do if you don't want this one <coughs> directly you can take call that is substitute a so here this a you can substitute here of course it's inside there only so we'll get a plus b whole star followed by a you can see now the ends with a that a you can generate from here the remaining any any string ending with ending in a you can take the help of these two productions but at the end you should substitute a so this is how you can get the same set of strings and this is also right option so option a and c are going to produce the set of strings which are ending in a identify equivalent regular grammar for l and what is this it's nothing but w followed by b where w is everything so it's nothing but ending in b now you need to identify again equivalent regular grammar is there any grammar which you can eliminate yes this is uh, what following rlg definition this following lg definition so it's it cannot be a regular grammar it whole grammar must be left linear or whole grammar must satisfy a right linear then only you can say it is regular grammar <coughs> so you cannot call this grammar as llg you cannot call this grammar as rlg so it can't be regular now what about this one it's following llg definition and it looks like b is at the end and capital a as s is deriving or depending on cap uppercase a followed by lowercase b so where uppercase a you already know it's a plus b whole star when you put here it's just nothing but ends with b right when you put this a plus b whole star here it you get ends with b and anyhow you don't need to look at but also take it as homework just try to understand what language is generated by this even though it is not regular but it does something right even though this grammar is not regular it might generate regular language just cross check it now what about this you have b but this b will definitely it comes at the end you can see that s is at the end now what this do two uh, productions will do they can repeat uh, a's and b's in any order that you want so it's nothing but a plus b whole star actually it will depend on s but s you can end with b so it's also ends with b so a and c are correct options
write a regular grammar so far you are identifying it right that's in the beginning it's a right up it's a you know the best approach that makes you to easy um, to identify the right grammar and now you have some knowledge you have some knowledge using this can you write a grammar can you write a grammar to generate the language l so now let's come to this point now what is this is this same as the previous ones no it is somewhat different a plus b whole plus except epsilon you would you want to generate all the strings if you want to generate you know including epsilon what is the approach s derives a s r b s or epsilon using rlg approach but that is for a plus b whole star you know when l is equal to a plus b whole star including epsilon what about llg concept then you will use um, the non terminal at first position in each production if you want then these two are different grammars but both are regular grammars they do the same job they do the same job a plus b all star again i am saying not only these two grammars in the world you have infinite grammars who can generate a plus b all star right <coughs> fine now what do you want you want a plus b whole plus so what additionally you need to do the changes to guarantee that epsilon will not be there so then if you try to eliminate epsilon here if you want write rlg rules are similar like s derives as or bs previously you were taken epsilon as the you know uh, string or production which helps us to terminate s now you can't do that because epsilon is not there in, in this language right so what do you do you are going to do instead of epsilon you just take a or b that is the minimum string you have in the language so if it is llg say s derives s a s b now you keep non terminals at left most position a or b that's it now these two grammars will generate a plus b whole plus where epsilon is not generated from this and when you compare these grammars here epsilon is generated here epsilon is not generated but except that remaining all strings are generated in both of them okay so this is how you write a grammar and in case if you are able to understand this grammars you can save a lot of time in the exam as you know this kind of productions will be given if you are already aware this is a plus b whole star or a plus b whole plus then you can easily you know substitute and get the final answer next now you need to write regular grammar for this language what is this language it's just similar to starting condition right previously you have seen starting with a now it is starting with w so how you change it there are very simple grammars we have so you can take it as s where a a you can put as it is and this one you may produce with the capital a if you want it but use rlg concept as the non terminal came at the end so you have to use the rlg productions to produce a plus b whole star like a a or b a or epsilon fine this is how you can generate using rlg concept you can try this using llg if you are using llg if you are using llg so the non terminal comes left side so the, sometimes it could be so easy it could be so easy like you know s a or s b which together can generate a plus b whole star and this s you want to end with double a so just write a followed by a that's it now you can see it's also going to generate the same set of strings what it does but it uses right linear grammar productions here we are using left linear grammar productions now you can try to understand if you want together they could generate any sequence over a's and b's but s is there always at the first position that can be terminated with double a so which exactly looks like what we want in our language write a regular grammar for the following language l now again 
Now this time it's ending in double E or ending in two consecutive A's. Now how you want to end with this double E? So very simple language is like S. Now you want to have this is some non-terminal A followed by AA. So now this capital A should use the left linear grammar productions to produce A plus B whole star. To produce A plus B whole star. So what do you do? A, A or AB or epsilon. So this old grammar is what? LLG. It's so easy but you have two non-terminals here. Now you can also write a very simple grammar RLG. If you want you can try. In right linear grammar non-terminal should be there at the end. So now this A plus B whole star should be generated by writing the productions AS or BS. How this S ends because this double A required at the end. So we put double A that's it. It will do our job. For this you require a practice to understand where do you put S and how to terminate it to get your language or to generate all the strings of your language. Okay. Next. Oh, it's very simple. Uh, even number of S. Just even number of S. If you know L is A star, simply you write S derives A S or epsilon or you may write uh, if you want to write left linear then you can use this. Correct? For regular grammar concept, if it is not regular grammar, you can use uh, various types of productions for that, A star. Now you want even number of A's, similar concept, in place of A, what do you have? In place of A, you have two A's, two consecutive A's. So you are going to write the same concept, double A, S or epsilon, which will repeat even number of A's every time. Or that's right linear grammar. If you want to use left linear grammar, you can write S, double A or epsilon. This is LLG and this one is RLG. There are, there are various other grammars we have. We will see in the context free grammar how uh, many other ways you can write which are uh, very useful for the exam point of view. Next, here L is odd number of A's. I guess if you want to mention some other way also, you can do that like W such that W belongs to A star, but length of W is odd. That's it. Previously, length of the W is even. Now again, we have the repetition, right? We have the repetition. Now, how you repeat it? Very simple, S derives A capital A. What capital A should do? It should repeat. What it should repeat? Double A it should repeat. So double A followed by A or epsilon. So it will, the capital A is responsible for producing even number of S and S is responsible to add just one A to make it odd. Which grammar it is? RLG. Now uh, you think about LLG, how do you write? If you want to keep the non-terminal left side, what you should do here? What you should do here? If you want to keep the non-terminal left side, this W has to be repeated, right? This W has to be repeated. So now you need to repeat something with this W. And when you want to end, you need to end with A. So what do you do? As the, you want to repeat this W as many times you want it. So it will keep on repeating, but when you want S, end then you can end with a that's it now this is gonna rip, uh, generate all strings over a's with odd number of a's with odd number of a's okay next a b old star which is again same now simply i'm just writing you want to use right linear you can use a b s or epsilon that's it now this a b will repeat as many times you want because it's there along with the recursion. So you will get AB star as the ending of the string is epsilon. So whenever you want to stop S, you can put epsilon. You get any number of or any sequence, uh, any number of sequence of ABs. So I have written right linear grammar. Similarly, you can also write left linear grammar. That's fine. Now, 
it's again a very interesting grammar we have the a star b star obviously you will take much time if you want to write regular grammar if you want to write context free grammar it is so easy so now i'm going to ask you uh, can you write some regular grammar to generate this now your focus is on one place like keep llg or rlg but focus on that if you are keeping llg then right side strings will be generated first if you are keeping rlg the non terminal at the right side so the left side should uh, generate first so which one you want to decide so if you are going for rlg what happens you can generate a's first so that at the end you can generate b's so how do you do that suppose i write here a s what it does it keep repeating a's so you will get something like a star s okay you can repeat as many times you want but somebody should be there to get that a star how do you get so this one r if i write a what that a will represent without this i can go to capital a that means without a power zero i can go to capital a in place of s you get a capital a or if you want a's then take as many a's you want and then go to capital a so if you want to go to capital b this capital b i am going to consider as capital a but before that do you want this a's or not this as will help you so this a is going to be repeated as many times you want if you don't want you go to a if you want you come here right now what is a capital a job <coughs> now how do you produce a b star using the same right linear grammar you know b capital a or epsilon now you see the every string is matched or not in a star b star you have epsilon so s derives a a derives epsilon so epsilon is generated is a single a generated how it generates s derives a s and this s you can put a and small a capital a you have here and capital a you put epsilon so you got a small a so it's generated similarly small b s derives a and a derives b a a you put epsilon you get a b similarly you will get a a or a b b a you don't get but b b so how do you get double a just repeat twice and put s with a a with epsilon a b how do you get a s and s you put a and capital you put b a and a put epsilon you get this and b b s derives a a repeat the b twice that's capital a twice so you get so that you get double b put at the end epsilon similarly you get every string which is there in a star b star right it should take much time in the beginning so that you will get an idea of what non terminal is generating what language okay l is uh, a is at least one year followed by at least one base now you can think about either llg or rlg so but fix first before writing it so that your focus will be that i you know non terminal should appear at particular position now which one is the best you can approach any one of them and work on so now a plus b plus now if you want to generate the uh, beginning symbols first use the right linear grammar or you want to generate uh, ending symbols first use the left linear grammar is your choice so now let me go for left linear choice if i go for left linear what it does it's keep on generating end strings first but how many b's at least one b right so this will repeat keep on repeating b's but if you want to go to any non terminal capital a and you must have at least one b without one b you cannot go to the a productions so now what a should do that a should generate a plus as you did not see any small a so far it should generate a plus how you generate that a plus a a or a you know that it's a plus like similar to a plus b whole plus and now you just try to understand this grammar you should get the same language that is at least one year followed by at least one b and if you look at the strings epsilon impossible single a should not be possible so you can't go to single a directly without a small b so first string that you get a b so s you can't substitute with any other and here s directly comes here capital a substitute with small a you get ab so this is a right grammar using 
left linear grammar. Similarly, you may use of a right linear grammar as I have explained in the previous example too. If you want really right linear grammar, what do you do? When you use the right non-terminal or right non-terminal right side, the leftmost symbols will generate first. So S derives A S is similar to the above one. So A's keep on repeating, but when you want to end, definitely you should have A capital E. What capital A should do? It should generate B plus. How you generate B plus? That is B capital A or B. Okay, so will it generate A plus B plus? Just cross check A plus B plus or not. Your minimum string is AB. Whether you go this or this, A is there. And if you go here, definitely next symbol need not be alone B. But if you go here, capital A can get alone B. So AB is going to be possible. So these two grammars are equivalent to A plus a B plus. Identify equivalent language generated by the following grammar. So now grammar is given to you. What is the language generated by this grammar? So what is the right approach to understand? See here, when S derives S you have, you can simply eliminate this always as it is not going to generate any extra string. But it will help you when you have this way. When you have this way, you can get some symbols here or you can get some symbols here, combination you may get lot. So when you have this kind of unit production, like S is depending on S or S derives S, actually it will waste your time to understand much, right? You need to understand the strings very quickly. So you can uh, try to eliminate this option or eliminate this production, then think about other things. So minimum string is A and this will definitely repeat A's as many times you want and at the end you want to terminate, you can put A. So one A, two A's you can get, get it from here by putting A there and three consecutive A's and so on. So that will give you A plus. If you look at, you might be uh, thinking about A star, but if A star is generated, how do you generate empty string from this grammar? Do you have any epsilon possibility? No. So it can't generate epsilon. It generates at least one A followed by any number of A's. Next. Now here the grammar slightly changed. Again this S you may eliminate as it is not going to give you extra strings. If it is really giving, keep it. But not giving, so I have deleted. And now you focus on that minimum B. And next you can see that next string is B you put there, B A you get. Next you repeat twice, you get double A. But S if you want end, you need to put a B. So you may understand what is happening. Next, B A power 3, B 4 A's consecutively and so on. So, which is nothing but B followed by A star. Of course, you have other techniques to do that. Suppose you have S derives S, A or B. Directly you can understand from here. Here this A is repeated and this B should stop here. So, by looking at this pattern, you can always say B should come first, then A should repeat any. So this will be B A star. So if you practice, if you have practiced this kind of grammars, then by just looking at you may say it's a B A star. Now we have the three S productions. I hope you remembered this grammar S A or S B or epsilon. I told you together this will repeat A's and B's any sequence. So A plus B whole star that you may repeat with S and this S terminated with epsilon so you got A plus B whole star. The similar pattern now what we have this together will repeat double A double B in any pattern and epsilon when you put in S here in the beginning you would simply get double A plus double B whole star. So that is that grammar is generating uh, double A or double B whole star. Next, I think uh, this will be very easy now. Now we have the uh, left most position uh, as non-terminal. It means left linear grammar. Now how do you write it? Same. 
here you have a b or b a whole star but s will it go left or right will go left because of its left linear grammar and when you put s left then epsilon when you put here substitution then simply you get a b plus b a whole star as similar to the previous one next what is the language generated by the regular grammar and now when you have many non terminals obviously you can't go from top to bottom so always the best approach is go from bottom to top if really you know the order is a uh, depend order dependence is similar to that one what b does you you know that what b does you can say simply what b does b plus a all star there is a very famous so right a or b or b or a both are same a plus b all star and take this and put in a productions so what a gets here right you get here b followed by a plus b whole star why did you get this because this whatever the result you get you need to put there and whatever the a result comes whatever the a result comes you need to put back here or here then what is the final answer here that a or b a or b don't say whole star because here you should know the difference it's it's not this one if it is really this one a plus b whole star followed by s but here you have a different non terminal so there is no recursion right now directly so a a b a we have a a b a we have right so because of this you have a plus b followed by a but what is a ye already we have computed that b followed by a plus b whole star you can see that the result this is the expression representing the equivalent language generated by the given grammar identify equivalent language generated by the following regular grammar so again we will follow from top to bottom sorry bottom to top if you go from top to bottom it would be very difficult to understand what a does without analyzing a so that's why we go from bottom to top and now just analyze similarly what capital b does it does we know if it is this e in place of e if you have epsilon no doubt it's a plus b whole star but what happened now is a plus b whole star will be possible but we always that will end with uh, so that will begin with a b b followed by any sequence of a's and b's now this b you can put as e so e followed by a plus b whole star now we got the answer you can put in a a production you get something that is e followed by a plus b whole star followed by b because capital b i just substituted what we had here this is a capital b right and now we got a capital a and take that and put into s what do you get a s is depending on a a or a b it simply a followed by a plus b which means but a already we know that a already we know that e followed by a plus b whole star b followed by as it is a plus b we have so this is the uh, expression to represent the language generated by this grammar okay you may say that which is starting with a followed by any sequence of symbols and b should appear somewhere and that's not somewhere second symbol from ending is b and then the last symbol is either a or b now again identify the equivalent language same now what we have so when we are trying to analyze capital a the b is doing nothing right we don't have anything with the b so this is going to do something the a is language generated by a simply epsilon why these two productions are useless right so you don't involve them to generate the strings now what s does is s um, the a followed by either a or b so actual language is that is language generated by s is a followed by either a or b 
and A is epsilon, so simply you generate A or B, that's it. Put this epsilon here, you get simply A or B. A very simple language, but grammar looks like complicated because of lot of useless productions. Now uh, we have understood the regular grammars. At this point of time, the context free grammars are going to be very important. Either it is exam point of view or understanding TOC or compiler, the context free grammar plays a very crucial role. As we know, the re till regular languages, you have uh, most of the concepts seen very easy, but when it comes to context free grammar, the concepts might be easy, but the representation looks little complicated, little complicated compared to the regular languages. So, in this context free languages, the first topic is the context free grammar. What this grammar does is it generates or it represents context free language. CFL represent context free language. This language will help us to represent uh, the syntax of the programs or uh, to derive the uh, programs based on their syntax. What is the CFG rule is we have the four parameters where each rule in the P is going to have the restriction V derives any sequence that any sequence you may talk about the v and t repetition like you may say v derives v union t whole star both are same any represents here the any sequence of terminals and non terminals any sequence of terminals and non terminals so both are actually same here And now we have uh, the restriction is left hand side should be left hand side should be exactly and only one non terminal right hand side no restriction at all. So that means I can use any number of non terminals if I want. You see there right hand side no risk no rule no restriction left hand side do you have exactly one non terminal it is enough for the context free grammar. Okay. So, now this is one example of the context free grammar. Here what rules we have? Keep a note. What did you learn in regular grammar? Regular grammar you have seen the restriction in the RH side, but in context free grammar no restriction. So, what is the relation here? Every regular grammar that is RG represent regular grammar is context free grammar. That means while we are learning regular grammar, actually we are also learning context free grammar, but the rules slightly change from RG to CFG. The CFG we do not have any restriction on the right hand side, but regular grammar we have. So, when we have the restriction, whatever you write grammar that is regular grammar is always context free grammar without any conversions, without any conversions. Now also I want to talk about there is a special grammar called as linear grammar. The linear grammar rule is like left hand side is fine, right hand side you can use the V any place. It, it could be any place, it, there is no restriction how the V appears, but if you do not have any symbol it should be sequence of terminals. Now look at this, the some examples, some examples when you write a s b or epsilon and look at that this a is a, is belongs to t star s is uh, belongs to b b belongs to t star epsilon obviously it's uh, represented by t power 0 
And now, here it's about linear grammar. Now again, what is the relation between linear grammar and regular grammar? And now you can say, similar to every regular grammar is context free grammar, you can say every regular grammar is linear grammar. Every regular grammar is linear, linear grammar. But the context free grammar need not be regular, even linear grammar need not be regular, need not be regular. Now uh, let us uh, look at what is there in this context free grammar. Before learning the grammars, we will look into few important points in grammars like uh, that we have not seen in regular grammar like how do you derive a string. We did the string deriving but we did not learn are there any techniques. The reason was the uh, when you take LHS and RHS, here you are always having one non-terminal. So anything you want to derive you have to substitute there only. So we did not do any kind of technique there but in context free grammar you could have lot of non-terminals. If you change the order of the substitution it will change the way you understand right. The final string might be same but the substitution order will differentiate the whole sequence of steps. Now here in the context free grammar we have a very small topic like how do you derive a string? Derivation of a string we have total three methods one left most derivation second we have right most derivation third we have the non-linear approach which is parse tree also called as derivation tree. So here I am not going to spend much time but you should know you should aware of this three techniques. Just uh, let me give one example here. Okay. So now I want to derive some string, this is my grammar right, this is some context free grammar. And now definitely you should uh, follow some approach for particular string, particular string I am taking here is A, B, B, that is it. For this string, how do you follow the substitution order? So I am going to talk about first leftmost derivation. In the leftmost derivation, our rightmost derivation or parse tree you were key is the s you always begin from s now s has two productions to produce this one you must follow the first production so you will substitute with a b now the question arises should i go for capital b or a small g so what derivation you are following leftmost so you it will think about what a capital a can do what capital A can do is it can put one more capital AB. If in case if it put small a then even the small a works but capital B the only generate small b. So you can't generate ABB here. Instead of that the capital A will substitute with AB and what happens you get ABA. When I sorry how did you get A? it is just B right, this B you copy paste. Here capital A substituted with AB. Now this ABB as I am following leftmost, so my focus always on capital A. Capital A now I will put small a, then again I am following leftmost, but capital B this time I will put a small b. The next step you will get the final string. So in the exam you may be asked that how many steps are there, how many steps are there to derive a string. Now what happened here, every time you are substituting the leftmost non-terminal, you see observe it from the root to the uh, string generation or to the string how it derived in all the steps you see that leftmost non-terminal is substituted first than any other non-terminals. Okay. And what about RMD is almost similar right, 
instead of thinking from left side, now you need to focus on right side. So, if S derives AB, can we keep the B for a more expansion like B is only deriving B. So, is there any way that B I can produce? No way, right? So, here there is no use of B. I tried that I got only B. Now, capital U will focus S, uh, it's B and then now A. Now, what A should do? will substitute either a b or a if you put a a b it will end our uh, string approach right our string is a b b our string is a b b now this capital a i'll put a b i'll put a b so what happens here and evaluate the rightmost non terminal only next this b i'll put using b productions b we have only b right so a b b and what capital A should do is now put a small a there. That is it. A, B, B. Now, you can see the sequence of steps could be different. First step is same A, B and then second A, B, B here A, B. See that sequence of steps in both the derivations are different, but the number of steps that you have taken for LMD, RMD will be same as both are generating the same string LMD and RMD. What about the parse string? Parse string is also same approach either you can follow LMD RMD to get analysis of this parse tree. S is the root of the parse tree. Now, S you are substituting with A B then A B comes into the picture and now if you are following LMD, A will be expanded first. If you are following RMD, B will be expanded first. But does not matter at the end, both has to be expanded. In the past three, this is a very important point. Capital A, I put A as well as B and capital B. If you are trying to expand this B anywhere, it is at, at the end, you got a small B that is it. Now, similarly, capital A, is it doing any job here? capital A. You got A, B and capital A you can put small a directly, small a and capital B directly you can put small b. So, this is how the parcel looks like. It could be very simple than these two derivations, but if you practice all the three are equivalent, all the three are equivalent. Write equivalent CFG for the following language which is the first language that we are looking for the context free grammar, but in regular grammars whatever you have seen they are all applicable for context free grammars too. Okay? Now, here L is equal to A power n, B power n so that n greater than or equal to 0. For this language if you want to write the context free grammar, see you have initially epsilon and then A B, then double A A's, 2 A's, 2 B's, you can see there is somehow you can generate this sequence. How do you want to generate it? What I will do? I will put somebody in the middle so that this A B, this A B and this A B I can generate together. Like as I said, I am going to put somebody in the middle like as I will put 1 A 1 B here. So, that every time I repeat the 1 A 1 B will be generated, 1 A 1 B will be generated. So, whenever you want to stop this, you just put epsilon. Now, you see whenever 3 a's are there, 3 b's will be there. Why? Because every a will take 1 b to the last. Here, 3 times you repeat 3 a's, 3 b's will be generated and put epsilon in place of s so that you will see exactly what is the language needed that is a power n, b power n. So, this is equivalent grammar. Of course, there are many other equivalent grammars for the same language and it is a very standard one and very simple one. Next, how oh, it is different from the previous one? Here now a power n as b power n. Previously you were talking about a power n b power n, but now you have an ash. So, almost it is same right, s derives what do you do a s yes, b, which will definitely will take the two symbols repetition an equal number of times, but whenever s want to end 
that just put ash that's it previously we were putting epsilon so here epsilon was there then a power n b power n now ash is there but answer still same a power n b power n but in between ash is there that's it so this is the simplest lang grammar for the given language next one whoever understood a power n b power n and this could be very easy for them why in a power n b power n uh, we have s derives a s b or epsilon now the same uh, similar approach comes here the s derives now i want two a's or even number of a's even number of b's that i am going to take it as a a s double b or epsilon I think this would be sufficient to generate the a power n, a power two n, b power two n. Now you can try to verify epsilon generated an a b as it is odd number of a's and b's. Definitely it will not. What about you have even number of a's and b's? That is a square b square. I no need to say that you can see directly putting epsilon there. And what about a power three b power three? No. And a power four b power four s. Yes. And similarly, you will have all the possible strings over a's and b's in which a power two n followed by b power two n condition appears. Let's move to the next question. Oh, instead of both are two n, now what we have a power n b power two n. Now you tell me where should I write the more symbols like B side or A side? So every A you have two B's. So what do you do when I read one A, you will have two B's. That's it. And now you can put epsilon if you want it to stop this S. So now you look at A power n B power two n generated or not? Yes, this will generate your language. Write equivalent context grammar for the following language. What does this means? M greater than n. So now put n is equal zero. Put n is equal zero. Then the number of a's should be at least one. So here you will get a plus. Any number of a's could be correct. What about n is equal to one? When n is one, then m will start from two. That means when n is one, like b power one, that m value will start from two. That means a power two plus some k, where k is greater than or equal to zero. This is how it's waiting for, right? Now you see double a. Uh, we don't know whether more a's comes or not. Double a followed by b is guaranteed minimum. So this is how you can understand. But what are the strings we have now? Minimum string. From our previous examples, you can take there, right? When you put n is equal to zero, when you put n is equal to zero, then what is the value of m that you can start one, right? So here you can see one a epsilon will not come, no doubt. What about one b? If I take one b. The number of b's will be greater than number of a's, so that's definitely wrong. That's definitely wrong. What else we have? Double a. Is that double a valid? Because double a represent two a's is definitely greater than zero b's, so it's valid. And what about a b? A b will represent equal, so we can't have it. What about double a b, and what about triple a, and so on? You see them. You see there the number of a's definitely greater than number of b's. This is the concept. Now, how to write this? You know, equal number of a's and b's. The already you know, right? When you have like a power n, b power n. Somebody can say that a s b or epsilon, but now what extra we have here? Number of a's greater than number of b's. It means 
if I write A's and B's, at some point of time, this must be equal, right? A is more. So, what you will do is here, A plus you are going to add. Anyhow, A star means these two can be equal, but equal case never happens, right? So, A plus at least one A should be more than this A solved by B's. Now, A plus I have written. Now, this thing we are going to generate. So, how do you generate? It is just context free grammar, right? You take this one non terminal, you can either take the same non terminal or different one that will work that will work. So, you can think about that. So, I am just saying A B, what A does is generating A plus that is A, A or epsilon, what B does is A B B or epsilon. Similarly, you have lot of other grammars and some of the grammars you can take it as homework. So, take it as homework. Now, this time number of b's will be greater than number of a's. As you see m less than n, so indirectly it is mentioned number of a's less than number of b's, correct. So, you can think about this and take it as homework and uh, post your grammar in the uh, comment box and let me see whether you are right or wrong. In case if, in case if you are having any difficulty here, See, think about m less than n means who is more, b is more, right? So, somehow the logic goes to this side. Right. This way you have to think. Obviously, this is another way to represent the language. Here, at least one b more than the a's, more than the a's. If you have m less than or equal to n, then here b instead of b plus, you get a b star, b star. So, you will for every a there will be b but you will have at least one b in this uh, language. So, I hope you can easily do it now like put a here uh, that s will generate this one or you can have s already have it right. So, take two non terminals separately a and b. What a does equal number of a's and b's what b does at least one b. So, you can easily write s drives a b and then what a does what b does that is it. So, it is very easy for you now. Let us move to the next. Ha, huh, good. See now you have uh, two combinations here A depends on B, here C depends on D. So, similarly, as I said, you partition, you do the partition like A does this, B does this. Now, what A does is very simple uh, C is 3 is equal, what B does is A is B is equal, but sequence is very important. So, S derives A B, and what A does is clearly mentioned that. C's and D's should be equal. So, C, A, D or epsilon. What B does is also mentioned clearly A's and V's are equal that we know it is a very popular example too. That is it. It will generate this language. And also you should try like when M comma N greater than or equal to 1, what restriction should be there here? What else should be there? Here you have written epsilon epsilon, but when you have greater than or equal 1, these two things will not come. Minimum string will be there C, D, A, B as everybody should present. So, take care of it. In place of epsilon, you will have a C, D. In place of epsilon, you have A, B. A, B means this A, B you will be having. When you put epsilon there, the minimum string comes A, B. So, it is it would be very easy in case if you want to write for greater than or equal to 1. I am just writing it, but you have lot of examples every example you should try this. In case you have m comma n greater than or equal to 1, then what do you do? Same as derives a b, but what a does at least c d. So, how do you write at least c d in the sequence of c's and d's? Here you write c d minimum and what b does at least a b. If you want more a b's you can go and get it but at least one a b should be generated. So, this is for m comma n greater than or equal to 1, m comma n greater than or equal to 1. Yeah. So, now you see this the combinations which is depending on each other. It is very important to compare you cannot write every time c d together right this time c and b should be compared and d and a should be compared. Here you just think about which one should be done first. 
So, I am going to take C B. So, the S will take care of C S B. C S B. Now, what it does? That it is going to write C power M B power M. So, it is going to generate every C there is a B, every C there is a B. But whenever you do not want C B, whenever you do not want this, yes, D and A could also possible, right? So, what do you do? Just A will come into picture and A could generate that D A A or epsilon. That is it. Very, very simple, right? So, whatever A is generated, directly see how many options are there without C B. D and A may appear. So, S to A, A will derive the D power A power equal and in case you want only C B, then it will keep on repeating to produce the equal number of C's and B's. Whenever you want to stop it, S to A, A to epsilon, that is it. You do not need to take D A. When you want both of them, then S will take care of C B's as many as you want and S, it goes to A, A, it takes this production to produce as many uh, d's you want equal to s. Yeah. It is one of the popular grammar you know this is set of all even length palindromes yes or no? Set of all even length palindromes. What is the palindrome concept is here if you have any string do the reverse you will get the same string like if this is x and you will always see x is equal to x power r you will always see that in case to form this string you might have w or w power r if this is w this may be w power r it is fine All right either w w power r you may take or x is equal to x power r here two types of strings are there one is even length, one is odd length. This by default, w and w power r together will form even length. But in general, x no need to be even length. It could be odd length too. In this example, it is clearly understood even length palindromes. So, simply x is equal to x power r is not enough. You must say length of x should be even. It means you are talking about even length palindromes, even length palindromes. Then how do you write a grammar for this? See here the concept is uh, similar to the previous cases like this A will generate this one, this B will generate this one and so on. What is this concept here if A comes again A comes at the end, if B comes again B comes at the end and this will guarantee even length palindromes or length we cannot guarantee we cannot have here but even length palindromes you can get it here. So, A A means if the first symbol is A last symbol is A and one more time if you take this if this is the nth symbol from begin is A this it should be nth symbol from end is A. So, this uh, productions are going to guarantee that set of all even length palindromes will be generated. If you look at the set of strings you will be having epsilon generated and A A B B that should be palindrome that should be even length palindrome. Similarly, 4 length you go 4 length and 6 length 7 8 length so these are going to be generated from this grammar. Now, can you write equivalent C of G for the following language what is this language length of x is 1 it means it is simply saying that w a plus b followed by w power r. So, it is same as the previous one but in between that a or b should be generated. So, here I am going to guarantee somehow w is definitely uh, a plus b whole star right there is no restriction for w. So, x there was a restriction we took that length 1 symbol strings are a or b. Now, w x w power r you already know a s a or b s b will take care of the all palindromes. Now, together will it give you even length palindrome? No. So, here you cannot put epsilon now what I should put what I should put to generate this one. So, in between what is there either a or b right in case if I write a or b 
would, would, would it be sufficient? You just check. Definitely it is sufficient, right? The meaning of this one is set of all odd length palindromes. All odd length palindromes. Okay. Yeah. When it comes x length of x less than or equal to 1, what happens here? W x w power r, this one the length is less than or equal 1 means either 0 or 1. So, you have two choices length of x is 0 or 1. If it is 0, then definitely this will be w w power r. If it is 1, definitely w a plus b w power r. If you put nth of x is 1, that means it is a or b only. You already did done both of them, right? This is even length palindromes. This is all length palindromes. Now, you tell me what is going to generate or what is going to be represented by this one. It is nothing but set of all palindromes. Together, if you do the union, you will get all palindromes. Okay, now, how to write the grammar? It is so far it is good that is even length or odd length you have written the grammar. But for together, have you tried it? A S A or B S B. Now, if I put epsilon, it will cover even length. If I put either A or B, it will cover odd length. So, here together we are going to put like epsilon or A or B. Then you will generate every palindrome over A sin base. So, this is going to be set of represents set of all palindromes. Okay, set of all palindromes. This is equivalent to set of all palindromes. The grammar is clear. Let us practice together regular and context free grammars. So, I am going to ask the grammar and you need to identify the language generated by it. It is one of the most important concepts or one of the most important models in a gate pattern. First question which is very simple, S generates two strings, then what should be the language? Epsilon A B. So, do not worry which order I write because it is a set of the strings, you can add any order, but two strings only generated. In the exam they may ask how many strings generated, what is the size of the L? It should be 2 and what is the maximum string, uh, what is the, uh, the size of the maximum string or you can say largest string size that is 2. And what is the smallest string size that is 0, epsilon length is 0. So, there are various questions you may predict from the grammar, but that is very easy when you know the language generated by it or when you know the minimum string, maximum string, uh, most of the things are easy. And when it is, the, when the language is finite, you cannot find the uh, largest or maximum string, remember that. Minimum string you can find for all the languages if you have a string, but maximum string you can find only for the finite language. You can't find for the infinite language. Second one, again you see always you go from bottom to top and A know A and B you know both of them and so S you want to understand what is the language generated by S then A and B you got put them directly here. So, you get A B as a string. So, epsilon is the one string you get directly another string you get A B. There is no recursive or there is no Repeat, uh, a repetitive non terminals or recursive non terminals here. Next, here you have seen recursion. Uh, previously, we were trying to understand, but now we do not, you know, understand whole language, it, uh, you know, string by string. What we do here, we have a shortcut, just follow that to understand uh, how to write the whole uh, language directly. Whenever you see the recursion, you know right S, S, it is called as left recursion. If you have the right recursion, this S will appear at the end of the production. But here the beginning of the production, you see the same non-terminal that is there LHS side. So, we call it as a left recursion. 
whenever there is something here that should repeat because of left recursion that means this a will be keep on repeating as many times you want this will end when others productions come into picture like epsilon when you put there simply l is equal to you may say that epsilon dot a star which is nothing but a star okay so language generated by this a star whenever i say language generated by a star you just remember either this should come into picture or you can use the right recursion so you can use any of these two grammars directly in other grammars so whenever you see these two types of grammars you believe that it is a star okay now what is this it's not a, a star right but similar it looks like a star but when this a comes here this a star before that a comes here which will make a plus okay in the exam they may say a star a or a star a plus all are same you might know that you might know that this can be represented many other ways this can be represented many other ways like a star a or what else a star a plus still the same answer or a plus a star if you know this more easy to you know identify that equivalent expression for this grammar sometimes what happens you we know it is a star but this is going to be a plus can be represented many other ways next and here uh, this is a very special grammar there are two types of grammars right ambiguous and ambiguous so here two non terminal two times the same non terminal appeared and lh is also same so this will definitely give ambiguity anyhow i'm not worried about ambiguity now uh, you we will discuss that in compiler again what is ambiguous and ambiguous grammars right now what is this represent so here i'm just trying to write the language generated by it one by one a definitely what about double a is possible when a you put in ss right ss means double a you have somehow so that's a square and how do you get the triple a when s you substitute ss one of the s you take again now you can put everywhere a so you get a power 3 similarly you will get every string now what is the language generated by this grammar it is a plus okay it is a plus but don't try to get a technique for ss how to repeat or how to substitute okay they are already in the recursion right the which s you take depends on the derivation but how long you take depends on your target okay here it's all possible from a power 2 every string is possible with the with the double s combination with the double s combination and the end production that uh, recursion can be stopped with just one way and you see again the language the first string is epsilon the second string minimum string is a and this can take care of i already told this can produce any length now any length even epsilon is possible when you put here even one a possible one a you put in one s uh, another s you put epsilon so now everything is possible from here like a square a power 3 and so on so which makes is equal to a star which makes it is equal to a star again the language generated by this when the grammar looks complicated or confusion just uh, do one thing try to pull the strings in a uh, minimum length from minimum length to some set of strings like four to five strings now minimum string is epsilon next minimum is a we are able to see that like when you take s with epsilon you get a obviously next you can take any of this s as a s uh, s a s so two a s also possible and so on so what it produces is simply a star again okay i hope you know that this will generate a plus b whole star the in place of s we have epsilon so no need to write so this is already known to us using uh, right recursion and right linear grammar approach of course the regular grammar and we know what is 
uh, the language generated or represented for this grammar. Similarly, you know if s is there for a left side, what happens? It's what happens? But is there left side s a or s b? Same answer. Very nice grammar, right? Here you have seen lot of various uh, various grammars, uh, different grammars like a s b s or epsilon. You know s derives s a or b s or epsilon. You know this both of them are same like. L is A plus B whole star, whether it is RLG or LLG, we got the same result, right? But here, some somewhat difference is there, like AS or SB or epsilon. Now, let me explain something. Epsilon possible, single A possible, single B possible. What else? If uh, AB together comes, what happens? But before that, let me write double A possible, and now. Is that A B or B A? What sequence is possible? Here B should come at the end. Here A should come at the beginning. So this S you can put S B and B can come at the end. So A B. The if both are coming after A B comes, then you will you can have double B as many as you want. So on, so on. Now you can try to understand what is happening. Any number of A's it can happen like epsilon A, double A, triple A. And so on. Any number of B's can happen. That is also possible. But when two A's and B's comes, what are the choices you have? A B, or double A B, or A double B, and so on. Then what can you write? Understanding this pattern. Now A's followed by B's. If you remember, this is a very interesting language. We have A star B star. Here any number of A's followed by any number of B's. So this A S will try to ensure A's will come in the beginning, and S B will ensure that B's will come at the end. But as many as you want, you can repeat. That's why we have A star B star. But this is different from other two grammars we have seen earlier. That's A plus B whole star. Now another interesting grammar we have A S S B. Now what is it? C S or epsilon. How complicated it is. Yes or no? Now this time I am giving you homework. Think about how to do this. Obviously, it's not that easy. But you think about. You know, if you have only two, that is very interesting. But when you have this many things, and really complicated to explain, what's going to happen? Okay, such examples we may not predict. But I want to think about homework. But my intention was different. My intention was something to write A S B S C S or epsilon. In this case, the answer is very straightforward: the A plus B plus C plus C whole star. It's very easy to write. But here you have S B that makes so complicated to understand the pattern or behavior of the language. Of course, you can understand what happens with A and C that comes in the beginning if you want. What happens with the B? B comes at the end. So now, using this combination, using this combination, what sequence? Now here you can see when you have these two, A and C should come together. They can come in any order. First C can come or first A can come. So it looks like something like A plus C whole star. You know, any sequence can come. Whether it comes or not, we don't know. But A comes or C comes or after A, after C, any combination, any sequence, right? But in case B comes. That will only happen after this, and just ensure is this language that you get or not. Really, it's complicated and uh, looks like you have uh, two things are happening left side and one thing is happening right side, and order is preserved. A and C should come before B's, but A and C how they come is not decided because A S after that A after A C may come again after C A may come. And this could have been repetitive any order, so just that's why A plus C whole star. As we are not clear how the A's and C's comes, but they come in the beginning before B's. Once B comes, A anybody A or C never comes as B at the end already. Okay, so just cross check. I'm saying it's just cross check, and let me know. Are you getting the same language, or are you able to generate some other string? 
than this expression. Whatever this expression generates, all the strings are generated here. If not, let me know and just take the homework, take it as homework and please answer it. Definitely this is not uh, uh, easy than other things. But you have the hint already. Next, how easy it is, right? And whenever you have it, this a and this b will repeat equal number of times. That's why a power n, b power n. In between s is there, so that s will get it as epsilon. So simply a power n, b power n. And n is at least 0 because s can generate epsilon directly without any a's and b's. Fine. Similarly, you think about, you will get in the future, you need to answer very quickly like a s b or a. What do you get? The language is a power n, b power n, but one a extra here, one a extra here. So, I told this will repeat equal number of times, s will end with a, s has to be replaced with a. So, which will be a power n plus 1, b power n, where n greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, you know, s derives a s b or b. In this situation, that a power n, b power n plus 1 comes, right. This is how you keep uh, writing uh, the languages for the given grammars. In case you have a s b or a b, in that case a power n, b power n such that n greater than or equal to 1 as at least 1 a b where there is no epsilon possible here. Okay, there are various examples I have given along with this and compare them how to write uh, the language for each grammar. Next, it is also so easy right, this is double a, like when you have a single a, a power n, b power n, now double a, so double a power n, b power n, so double a power n is nothing but a power 2 n, so you will get the language a power 2 n followed by b power n, a power 2 n followed by b power n. Next, you have double a and double b. So, you can simply write double a power n, double b power n as s is going to replace with epsilon at the end, so no need to worry about it. So, what else you can write here? a power 2 n, b power 2 n. So, n that s can directly generate epsilon, that means n greater than or equal to 0. You can see the minimum string and put what is the value of n at, at the end of the proving. Next, see this is what I am talking about, double a, double b. So, double a all power n, double b all power n and c comes in the middle as c has to be replaced here, right? Which way you can write a power 2 n, c, b power 2 n such that n greater than or equal to 0, fine? And now, always we use the same approach that go from bottom to up to understand what A does is A power n, B power n, very clear and put there A power n, B power n, that language is A, B, A power n, B power n. So, you will get A power n plus 1, B power n plus 1, where n greater than or equal to 0. Or you can also say that a power n, b power n such that n greater than or equal to 1. Both are same, when you start with n equal 0, you have n plus 1 as a power, when you start with n equal 1, you have n power, which will give you same meaning. Next you have, what is a does here? A does here c power n, d power n, of course when I am not mentioning n means n greater than or equal to 0. And now you have s2 productions, what s does here, a, s, b or a, this is the recursive production, right. So, when you keep on repeating, what happens, a power n, b power of course, n already there, so I cannot take n, so I will take k, a power k, b power k. Now, s is there in the middle, s has to be replaced with a, so this a should come here and what is a already known, that is c power n, d power n. 
and you can write n comma k greater than or equal to 0. So, this is your language now. The dependency between this two and this two. It is given S is doing A, B and whenever the S want to terminate or complete, then it will replace with A and A will take care of C and D comparison. Oh, it is again a very simple, right? When A has only one production, you do nothing, right? S derives A, A or epsilon. A is very simple, that is only one production, which is nothing but now S derives A, capital A when you put here, right? B S, B S comes or epsilon. So, this you can see now, next time when you repeat, what happens? S again A, A, again A, A and A repeats with B S. So, again A, B S. So, what ha what's happened here? With this, what do you understand? Which is nothing but S or language L is equal to A B old star. A B old star. And here, you just think about with slight change, it could give a different meaning. See that. S B. Now, think about just have uh, you know flip that these two symbols. Right, I interchange these two symbols. So what happens here? This S V when you substitute here, S derives A A or epsilon. Here I am just thinking about in place of A, what happens if I put S B? I can do that because A is doing only one job. This is going to repeat or produce A power n B power n. Right. So, this is how it uh, going to produce. But, uh, of course, it depends on what grammar is given, how you analyze should match. Again, now we have bottom to top. What B does? Very simple now, you should not take much time, right? B star. And what A is doing? But ensure that if there are two things are depending, if I have already taken power n, do not take this power in any other productions because you are trying to create the dependency that is wrong. As if two productions are, are two set of productions are different, then keep the different variables. Now, you know what is A and B, just you need to concatenate them. A is A power n, B power n, B is B star. You know, it is nothing but if I keep writing in terms of m and n, m and n. Who is more here? B is more. So, n should be more. So, m less than or equal to n happens. m less than or equal to n. So, n should be that n should be greater than or equal to m. That means, number of b's will be greater than or equal to number of a's. That is the language generated by the given grammar. Okay, I think I have given some homework like uh, if m less than n, what is the grammar? Equal I have not mentioned there, but here you got it. Now, this B is going to generate, let us say, A power n, B power n. And this A is generating A star. And when you put together, what happens? A star, A power n, B power n. Together, you can say that either A is equal to B's or will be more. So, I can say that A power m, B power n, such that m greater than or equal to n. So, number of A's is greater than or equal to number of B's in this scenario. Again, all these languages uh, comes under context free languages because context free grammar able to understand or is representing context free language. Here, C power n, D power n. Here, do not use the same power, I will change here A power P, B power P as they are equal. Now, what is the language A followed by B? What is A? A power P, B power P. What is B? Is going to be C power N, D power N. Such that P comma N greater than or equal to 0. This dependency is very easy to handle. Clear? Next, again, very interesting grammar now, 
this a is very clear that c power n d power n now how do you understand the first one already we did once that s derives a s b or a you know this will generate a power n b power n but this s has to be replaced with a this a comes here right and that a is already known as c power n d power n that's why i am saying already when already n is there don't use the n again right in the same grammar so i am replacing this a power k b power k and in place of s a comes in place of a c power n d power n and this is your language here the dependency fine think about it what this a is a is a power n b power n but what this s is doing normally you understand s derives a s r, r a you just say a plus right you can see that l is equal to a plus look at that now here you should say l is equal to a plus but what is a is a power n b power n it's plus a power n b power n now here you need to understand why you should write in this way why you should write in this way because a already representing some set of strings and that you want to repeat at least one time but a has already infinite number of strings now this is the best way to generate so why did i take this grammar but there is a very special grammar we have uh, which is s derives a s or epsilon and e is as usual this was one of the uh, previous concept which was asked in the exam like a we know a power n b power n right a is already representing what a power n b power n now this s is going to give you a star it in the sense a power n b power n a star okay that n is greater than or equal to zero you keep inside now why did i take this there is a special grammar as is told a power n b power n old star and a power n b power n old star you see the difference you see the difference difference definitely there right here if you think about it is there any possibility is there any possibility that a power 2 b power 2 a power 3 b power 3 is it possible here once n value is fixed you can repeat any number of times at one you can repeat any number of times this one but you can't change the value of n so this is impossible what you can get a power 2 b power 2 one time zero time two times three times that you can take care of it you can repeat as many times you want because of old star this is possible one time you can get two times three times as many times you want but here see the n is inside now what i can do i want to repeat two times in that i can just take one time one time each time i can change the value of n first time i can get a power 2 b power 2 second time i can get a power 3 b power 3 because the value is fixed inside the va n value is fixed inside so here it is possible so this is actually comes under the cfl this is actually not a cfl at all so very very special uh, concept and languages this language comes under cfl and that has a context free grammar in the previous example itself here i have written already this grammar is going to uh, generate a power n b power n whole star actually should write that a power n b power n such that n greater than or equal to 0 whole star okay so try to find the difference between those two what i told okay. identify the language generated by the following context free grammar now can you do it very quickly b it's just producing a star a is producing also a star then what happens language is a followed by b that is language 
generated by A followed by language generated by B, which is A star dot A star. What happens with A star dot A star is A star. Okay. Sometimes even the answer is very simple, but grammar looks, looks complicated. Now, can you think about this? And what B does is A star, we know it, but what A does is not A star. A does is just A or epsilon. So, here this is simply A or epsilon. Now, when a language is there, capital A means A or epsilon, capital B means A star. Anyhow, finally, A plus epsilon dot A star. Now, you have every string here. Epsilon means take epsilon, epsilon. A means epsilon A or you can go many other directions, many other ways too, but finally you get a, a star again. Okay. Next. See here, capital A does what? A or epsilon, right? But the B is not mentioned, means this whole production is useless. It means S has no production left. The language generated by S is empty now. You can't, even though capital A generates something, but without capital B, you can't have any string as A and B are using concatenation to follow this, follow these two, right? A followed by B. So, A and B both should generate something to get something out of A, B. Again, what is capital B doing here? A power n, B power n. What about capital A? So, capital A is not depending on capital B, safe. So, what capital A is doing? A plus B whole star. Very interesting, right? And now, capital A followed by capital B. What is capital A here? A plus B whole star. And what is capital B? A power n, B power n. When you have this two, right, you tell me, here epsilon is there, when I try to collect the strings, will I get A plus B whole star or not? Yes, you should get, because in this you have epsilon. When I have epsilon, already you got every string, and whenever you have something already which is covered here. So, this is going to generate A plus B whole star. Now, I think you have seen somewhere this one in palindrome concept, right? So, what palindrome it is? This is always going to consider as a palindrome concept. Whenever you see A, there is A here. Whenever there is A and last, second last is A. Similarly, whenever there is a B, there is a B. So, who will do that? So, B S B, then S you have to require that A S A. Again, you need S. So, A S A. Somehow, you require S support to have the first and last symbols are same. So, this creates palindrome. So, here you have epsilon means you are going to get nothing in the middle. Means, whatever the length you have, the same length you will have. Total overall length is twice the length, means it is even. So, it is going to generate even length palindromes. Set of all even length palindromes. Over A sandwich. Okay, already you know how to write it, right? W, W power R such that W belongs to A comma B whole star. Okay, otherwise, you can also mention W such that W belongs to A comma B whole star and W if it is a palindrome then W is equal W power R and length of the W should be even as you have to mention what is the length of the W otherwise its length can be odd. Here no need to mention because the w w power r will always guarantee even length. Even the w is odd, odd followed by odd definitely even length. That is the reason in this even length already mentioned in the form, but in the form it is w, here nothing mentioned, so everything should mention in the conditions of the set. Now for this language you have the set of all even length palindrome strings. Now for this grammar what is the language? Here you have the same as like w, w power r concept, w, w power r. But how do you end? The a is there to stop in the middle, so we will have extra a, that is it. Remaining everything is same. Can I assume it is the palindrome? Obviously, it is a palindrome, 
but in the middle that you have a odd length palindrome but not all odd length palindromes because you don't have a or b here so it's a set of odd length palindromes condition is the exactly the middle position you have a that's it that's the restriction here okay the center or middle symbol of the string is a it is a set of all odd length palindromes but the mid symbol is a now if you if you are saying this definitely it's going to be odd length palindromes you can see that this string form w w power is even length if you get a or b in the middle you will be having all odd length palindromes it will give you all odd length palindromes okay similarly can you guess what is going to be next it's going to be all so when you have a or b it's going to be odd it's going to be even because of the uh, w w power r concept w a or b or epsilon you may mention x if you want it right i have not mentioned but if you want you can mention w belongs to a comma b whole star if you really want to mention you can also mention this way w x w power r such that w belongs to a plus b whole star but x is belongs to either a or b or e okay so this is uh, going to be set of all palindromes set of all palindromes now what is this of course i can't have a single name for this but i will create see whenever a comes in the beginning the last symbol is what b it's going to flip the symbols right and if the b comes the last symbol is a again a comes the second last is b if b comes then a similarly what's happening here of course in the middle epsilon it is even length string only but whatever the w you have the every symbol of w is going to be like one's complement if zero is there the one will be replaced if one is there zero is replaced so here something like you have w w power r when you compare the w and w w uh, sorry w power r what happens every symbol of the w you see that a a when you reverse it so it looks like this two are going to be reversed but exactly it's not reverse this name is something different i'm i'm not going to keep w power r so i'm going to change something w okay don't use this name w i'm just using like complement but this is not the complement r so now what do you mean by that suppose a a b a is there so w means let's say a a b a and this is not a complement something like you know uh, doing a with b replacement b with a replacement so b b a b and when i do w complement r then it's going to be a b b and when i write w dot w complement r you will get a a b a followed by b a double b so it's my own definition here don't worry about it but everything is mentioned clearly this is going to happening this is going to be happening here so somewhat new language that i have written here and that's what happened in the exam you should know their representation their notation in the in um, you know whatever the concepts you have learned using this knowledge you must be in a position to um, answer such questions okay i, I think uh, now onwards you can do it as i'm giving homework for you and let me know what is the answer for this question in the comment section right similarly i am just going to give one more homework so let me know the answer for this question too okay just go always from bottom to up you you have to get it doesn't matter how much complicated it is always go from bottom to top very few questions i am giving homework you can try them okay with this Uh, we have completed uh, regular grammars and context-free grammars, and what we have learned here 
if any grammar is given what is the equivalent language in case you want some language how to write the equivalent grammar for that either regular or context free grammar here the relations every regular grammar is context free grammar but context free grammar no need to be regular grammar so remember some of the points here every regular grammar is context free grammar okay that's the first point every rg no doubt generates a regular language only regular set but every regular set can be represented even not regular grammar so this directions are very important when i am writing this direction means other direction might be something difficult to say like regular set will it have only regular grammar no you can also write context free grammar very simple s derives a b a derives a b derives b what is the language generated by this after finite language but the grammar is not regular but language is regular every finite is what regular so this grammar is not regular but whatever generated by this grammar is regular so here regular grammar always generates regular language but regular language may be generated by non regular grammar too this is what my intention here so understand the statement the language generated by the grammar is regular but grammar itself may not be need not be regular okay every regular grammar is context free grammar but context free grammar need not be regular every regular grammar generates a regular set but regular set may be generated by not regular grammar now other points which i want to add here some uh, grammar of course may not be important now but in case if it is needed in the future you may use it linear grammar what is the regular grammar either llg or rlg so this linear grammar is like a v that exactly one on the lhs said this is the same for regular context free grammar and this linear grammar but right side you can have only one non terminal but anywhere like this in left linear grammar we should be in the left side right linear grammar we should be in the right side in the linear grammar no restriction it can be anywhere if you want to have a one non terminal that's all the definition change but remaining all you know you can understand every regular grammar every llg you can say lg every rlg is also lg it means every regular grammar is lg you can say that but linear grammar no need to be llg it may be rlg sometimes or it no need to be rlg it may be llg sometimes so here examples you may see all regular grammars are here every regular grammar for this you can conclude every regular grammar is what lg of course every regular grammar is context free grammar too and every lg is what here there is no restriction for context free grammar so i can say every linear grammar is context free grammar but context free grammar no need to be lg here example you can see apart from regular grammars that you have seen sometimes we write like this right asb very famous actually it is not regular grammar but it is context free grammar but strictly it is linear grammar you can see that this a linear grammar whatever the linear grammar generates you can say it's a linear language so here a power n b power n actually called as a linear language because it's uh, going to be represented by linear grammar right it's not regular grammar but it is a linear grammar so hence this language can be called as even linear language if you want it fine in the conclusion what is most important here if any grammar is given you should know what strings generated by this grammar sometimes which of the following string is generated by the given grammar with that would be difficult sometimes when the grammar has a lot of productions so you should focus on that and type of the grammar is it regular or context free grammar is not much important but you can easily understand it right and when the language is given grammar is given you should know how to match both of them right 
so in the summary we have seen uh, many regular grammars and context free grammars and apart from this we have seen uh, languages for each type of grammar right for the regular grammar versus regular language context free grammar versus cfl so cfl we have written context free grammar for a given context free grammar we have identified cfls apart from this there are many other grammars which are not context free also possible but in context sensitive grammar you have all these grammars as well as additionally some uh, other grammars comes because of the rules are uh, not stricter than these two productions fine uh, with this uh, we are going to conclude the grammars in coming lectures we are going to talk about the push down automata and uh, what else context free languages deterministic context free languages uh, we are going to uh, learn exactly what pda is how pda accepts a context free language in the coming lecture as usual thank you everyone uh, if you have any doubt as i said if you have any doubt please post your doubt in the comment box i'll uh, come to i'll i'll reply to you as soon as possible please tag me if possible thank you so much bye bye take care